Every business needs content writers. And you, my friend, can start selling your writing right after this tutorial. Content writing is a massive industry that is now estimated to have $4 billion valuation and is projected to grow up to $6 billion. And you could be getting a small percentage of that. Also, getting paid well and traveling the world. My name is Darius Lucas and on this channel I teach you how to turn your words into cash flow. And if you're wanting more videos about writing, copywriting, content writing, click like and subscribe. So in this content writing tutorial, I'll cover 10 valuable content writing lessons that will get you right on track of producing amazing content and making some nice cash. I'll also share how I personally use content writing to build my own half a million dollar language school. So let's grab our pens and notebooks and get started. Number one, what is content writing? So let's first address what content writing is. And I'm looking at this beautiful Forbes article where they have this amazing definition of what content writing is. So content writing involves the creation of text content to educate or entertain readers. It may drive sales as well, but that's not its primary purpose. With content writing, you want to educate or entertain readers by creating high quality and valuable content. So what may content writing include? So that might be blog posts, articles, tutorials, email newsletters, evergreen articles, case studies, social media posts, video scripts. So essentially, content writing helps brands to build authority, to educate their readers, to spread their message, to connect with their prospective clients, and then possibly later on make a sale. Number two, how to structure your content. You see, when it comes to content writing, it's all about long form. It's all about running a marathon. What do I mean by that? Usually you have a chunk of text. It's a substantial piece of writing and you have to learn how to guide your reader through the piece and make sure that the reader stays engaged, hooked, interested and continues reading up to the end of the article. Now, how do you achieve that? Of course, that's down to your structure. It's down to your headlines and subheadings and the way you format your article. And this is exactly what we are going to cover further on in this video. But what I would first say is that you have to start paying attention to structure. And first start paying attention to how anything that you read is structured. So for example, you're browsing online and you're reading an article, just really think for yourself, how is the writer has pieced this article together? How is this writer guiding me through this text? What are they trying to do in this piece of content? And having this critical and analytical eye will certainly make you a better writer yourself because you will constantly be breaking down a piece of writing wherever you see it. Now, what I would also like to give you is this particular structure that might seem simplistic, but at the same time, probably most pieces of writing abide by it. Now, of course, this structure will depend on whether you're doing a video script or an email, but sort of looking at the general structure of a piece of text, a piece of content, you want to have a strong introduction to capture the reader's attention. Then you want to break down your piece into main points. And usually for content writing, we have a piece up to, you know, a thousand words long. And I would advise to have around three to five max sort of main key points that you're making in the article. And obviously then you conclude the article with having a nice tight sort of conclusion. And, and I'm including this little breakdown somewhere on the screen as you're watching it. Now again, whilst this sounds super simplistic, we all know that every piece of writing, every story has to have the beginning, the middle and the end. But a lot of the time, this is the most critical mistake that new writers make is that they just simply bash out, you know, a chunk of text and they think that is an article. So you have to be very particular with it and you have to be very structural when it comes to 
writing. But you see, the problem with that, just you know, throwing text onto paper, is that you're not guiding your reader. You're not giving the best experience to your reader. And what is most likely to happen is that nobody is going to read your article. So let's continue with this tutorial and I'll continue giving you valuable lessons how to structure your piece of content and how to start this whole content writing career. Number three, how to write headlines. Your headline is everything. Like this is the most important part of your piece. It has to be the most attention grabbing. It has to be intriguing. It has to indicate to the reader that is worth clicking and opening your article. This is super important. And a lot of people then doing the clickbaity headlines, you know, to promise something that is not in the article just to make sure that people click on the headline. Now, my advice of course would be to maintain your integrity and to deliver what you promise. So this is why I came up with four questions that will become your criteria when writing your headline. So first, what I'd love you to answer is question number one. What is my piece about? You want to know what your piece is about before you even write your headline. That's very important. And I know that again, it sounds very simple, but you'll be surprised how many people do not know what their piece is going to be about before they start writing it. And that's why it takes you ages and ages to write anything because you have no clue what the piece is going to be. So you want to jot that down. You want to clarify for yourself what the piece is about. Then you want to answer the following question. Is it going to be of value to the reader? And this is where you want to start thinking, what value am I delivering? And will the reader find this of use? So for example, you get hired to write an article for a plumbing company. And a plumbing company might just come to you and say, well, it'd be really awesome if you write about this new technology that we have. Now, guess what? Nobody in the entire planet wants to know about plumbing technology. What you need to do is to think, how can I make this of value to the reader? Could I be writing about plumbing in the way that is of use? So for example, the best type of plumbing that you can have in your new house. And you can gear this article to newbie homeowners and write about plumbing in a way that it is of use. So that was our second question. So is it going to be of value to the reader and make sure that it is, right? So the third question is, what's my promise? What am I promising? What am I going to deliver in this article? And that promise will be reflected in your headline. Once you've answered these three questions, and you had a go at writing your headline, once you've finished with it, look at the headline and ask yourself, do I have the killer phrasing? And can it be made better? Because this is super important. You might write a headline and it might be a good headline, but it can always be a better headline. You might want to cut out a word or two. You might want to make it tighter. You might want to make it punchier. This is probably my favorite word when I talk about copywriting. It's punchy and punchier. So you have to be critical of your writing as well, and especially of your headline. Now we continue with number four, how to write the hook. This is super important. We did talk about writing your headline and we did have the criteria for writing your headline. So use the four questions to also write your hook, to write your first two to five sentences that are there to serve as an introduction, that are there to hook the reader, that are there to make sure that once the reader had been you know, intrigued by your headline and once they clicked on the article and they came to read your piece, the introduction, the hook, they are there to prove to the reader that it's worth their time, that they got to the right place, that it wasn't a clickbait and that they should continue reading. So here you also want to be intriguing. You want to be promising value and you want to be using the introduction, the hook as a gateway into the piece as a gateway into making the key points in your article. So now you know what your piece is about. You've nailed your headline and you've nailed your introduction. Now, what's next? What should you know and what should you do? So here is number five, vocabulary. This is where you ask yourself, who is this piece for? And what words, what languaging am I using? Now, what do I mean by that? So you have to really know who your reader is. Now, this is something that I see time and time again. A lot of writers forget who their audience is, who their reader is. So earlier we had an example of a writing an article for a plumbing company. But the thing is that that article wasn't for plumbers, but it was for people who need plumbing systems in their houses. And for the sake of this video, we decided that, that article was going to be for new home owners. So this is where you start thinking, what type of language will they be using? 
Usually homeowners are in their 30s, in their 40s. So what type of language are they using? Now, where are these people from? Are they global? Are they local? And you want to be thinking of the language that they are using and the language that they will resonate with. And this is where your vocabulary comes from. You want to be speaking the language of your reader. You don't want to be speaking the language of yourself. You don't want to be speaking the language that you are used to. You don't want to be using the language that is your language. You don't want to be making any assumptions. You want to be specific with your language. You want to be clear with your language and you want to connect with your words. So this is where you need to be very clear and define who's going to be reading your article. Number six, work in your call to action. Now, as we discussed, content writing is there to educate, to help brands connect with their customers and to spread the brand message. But at the same time, you can use it to sell, but the sale is much more passive than that would be in your sales copy. So how do you include a call to action? How do you remain educational? How do you continue giving value in your article and yet invite your reader to buy? or just let them know that they can buy from you should they want to. So this is where you want to be going over your article and think where you can sprinkle in some backlinks to your products or your services. For example, if we go back to the plumbing company example, and I'm sure you're absolutely excited about hearing me speak about plumbing. And by the way, I know nothing about plumbing, so I might be totally wrong in my assumptions, but this is where you obviously you would be working with your client and understanding their needs. So for the purposes of this video, we still continue with our plumbing example. And so say throughout that article, you do refer to that plumbing system that you think every owner should have. When you mention that system, you wanna be underlying that sentence or that word so that the reader would be able to very quickly click and check out the product and understand what it is about. If the reader is interested, in what you have to say. If they are getting curious about this plumbing system, you don't want to leave them wondering about the website and trying to find where's this plumbing system and how much does it cost, et cetera, et cetera. You want to give them links. You want to sprinkle those links throughout the article. So as the person is reading through, they can just literally click, go read and possibly make a purchase. And once again, whilst content writing might not be the sales vehicle, it might just convert your reader into a customer and your content writing lands will be super happy to see that. Number seven, don't do stock content. By the way, if you are loving the video, if you want more videos on copywriting, writing, digital marketing, click like, click subscribe, because there are many more coming your way. So don't do stock content. What do I mean by that? Be creative. A lot of the time, content writers become almost like AI writers. They just literally type up and bash out copy that is just like any other piece of content on the internet, written in a generic way, lacking creativity, lacking substance, full of backlinks to products, belly engaging with the reader, having lots of stock photos, and just looking basically very dry and uninteresting. So don't do that. If you want to stand out in the market, if you want to be known for your content writing skills, think how can you be put in the extra bit of effort? Think how can you be writing this article? So as you're writing a piece for a plumbing company or an accounting company or anything else, think how can you be telling it as a story? What can you do that nobody else has done? What would really stand out in the market? How can you be engaging in your piece? So as you're writing your piece and keep asking yourself these questions, they help you become sort of a content writing artist. They help you stand out. They help you not become a stock content writer because AI will soon replace the content writers who have no soul in their writing, who have no creativity in their writing, who have no spark in their writing because AI will do it better. However, if you know how to bring in your creativity, if you know how to bring in that sort of spark in your copy, you will sure have a job writing content. Number eight, what's the larger story? This is an important question to ask yourself when you get a new assignment. You want to look at the brand, you want to look at the entrepreneur and think what story are they telling through their brand? And this is again where our storytelling skills workshop comes in. We want to be telling a brand story. We want to be thinking how does this single piece of content 
become part of the overall brand story that the brand is telling constantly through their social media, through their videos, their tweets, their products. And I think this is the question that a lot of people do not ask themselves because they think, okay, well, I'm gonna write a functional piece of copy. I'm gonna put it out there and it has no relevance whatsoever in terms of you know the bigger picture of the brand. And this is where I'd like to share what I've done in my own business when I started my language school. Now we are teaching multiple languages. We are having multiple teachers. We are having multiple courses. But when I started my school, I was the only teacher, the only marketer, the only copywriter. And I wanted to attract clients fast. And I wanted to use copywriting and I wanted to use content writing to get clients. So I decided to start writing articles about learning English. Then I went and found a publication that wanted those articles. They agreed to take them free of charge and obviously publish them because that was free content for them. And they included my details below the article. So I slowly started getting clients that way. And the first three years, I really was getting clients through those articles. At the end of those three years, I had around 60 articles written because I think I was writing an article a week, an article every couple of weeks. And I put all those articles together, I edited them and I created an ebook. So suddenly I also had this whole book for people who wanted to learn English as well as having done this whole column with this local publication, which then also meant that I had built up my own clientele. So this is how knowing what story you're telling as part of your brand, this is how knowing who you're writing to helps you scale your business. And I really believe that if you choose your words consciously and you use them consciously, you can really turn them into cash and you can build your own business or can help somebody else scale theirs. Number nine why editing is crucial. As a lot of writers will tell you, writing is the art of editing. Once you've written your piece, you don't just click send. You let it cool down and you get back to your piece with a critical eye and you become observant of how you could be improving your piece. And here are four questions that will help you do that. First, you want to ask yourself as you are rereading your article, Am I being clear enough? This is an important question because you want to be thinking of your audience and your reader and you want to be thinking of the message that you want to convey and you want to keep asking yourself, is this clear enough? Am I making sense here? The second question, is my message getting across? So for example, if you're introducing this new plumbing system that we keep talking about, you want to keep asking yourself as you reread your article, is my message getting across? Am I actually saying what I wanted to say initially? You then also want to ask yourself, am I guiding the reader well through the piece? What's the reader's journey? As they go through the main key points, is it easy to follow? Is it clear and concise? And then you want to also be thinking, are there any words sentences or even paragraphs that need to be cut, that need to be slashed away for the sake of clarity, for the sake of getting your message across, for the sake of keeping your reader engaged. I think a lot of the time people just want to get to the word count. They think that the value of the piece depends on the amount of words that you write and that's totally untrue. Your piece becomes much more powerful and you become a better content writer immediately. If you are ruthless with your editing, if you cut things that do not need to be in your article, if you really identify things that clog up your copy and make your reader lose interest. So before you go ahead and click the send button, edit, edit, edit. And lastly, number 10, proofread your work thoroughly. Now, this is one last thing that you want to do before you click send, and that is proofreading your copy. Obviously it can be part of your editing process, but you need to be very thorough with your grammar, with your punctuation, with your syntax, because you don't want to send your copy full of errors. Now, if you have decided to become a content writer, a copywriter, you need to make sure that your grammar is spotless before you send it to the client. Because if you send your copy to your client and it's full of errors, and now they have to correct your spelling, your grammar, your punctuation, well, they are more than likely not hiring you again anytime soon. So this was our crash course in content writing and we covered 10 valuable lessons and I'd love to hear which of the 10 lessons was of most value to you. So share it in the comments down below. Meanwhile, there are many more videos on this channel that can help you on your content writing journey. So click on the videos that are appearing now on the screen as well as click like and subscribe if you want to get notified about my future videos.